Hi, my name is Paul, and uh, I'd like to talk about this camera that I assembled from different cameras that I owned. I got a model uh, H16S off of uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace for, you know, under 200, like, I think it was like 150 bucks, 160 bucks, and it had some major problems, the uh, shutter didn't move and all that, so I disassembled it, cleaned it, and did a overhaul, lubed it, uh, ultrasonic cleaned the parts, polished the parts, put it all back together per the manual, and uh, I didn't have any of the special tools, but I, I, I tested it and everything was working. But, you know, I have a couple of uh, reflex cameras. I have a Rex 3 and a 5 and an EL, so I really wasn't getting a lot of use. So I had been thinking a long time if I could convert this into reflex, um, um, but with the EF mount and a video assist built in. So that's what I did. I got in my Fusion 360 program and I made an exact replica of the Bolex uh, outside housing and uh, the front um, plate for the uh, turret and uh, reverse engineered the whole thing. I'm not an engineer, but uh, I have a micrometer and I figured out Fusion 360. So I made a very close pretty much exact replica in 3D CAD and then I started designing this. This is the EF pellicle housing and this is an HDMI camera that I have used for other projects and um, there's a focus screen in here and here's the pellicle mirror and if you don't know what a pellicle mirror is it's a, it's a, um, I'm trying to focus here okay there it goes what is a pellicle mirror? A pe pellicle mirror uh, reflects some light and allows uh, some of the other, you know, most of the light to go through it depending on what the ratio is. The ratio that I used was a 70% going through to the film and 30% going up to a ground glass right here. Now, this flange is the uh, mounting flange for the lens. And that it has to sit exactly for the Canon EF mount, which was what this is. It has to sit exactly 44 millimeters to the film plane. Okay, so this reflected off of the pellicle mirror, the 30% goes up to a ground glass, which is exactly 44 millimeters bouncing at a 45 degree angle. Well, how did you figure all that out? Well, I'm no optical engineer or anything like that, so I modeled the path of the light. In the um, in the CAD program, and uh, it's right on the money. Um, it goes right to the ground glass, and this camera focuses. Uh, I had to mess around with different lenses and getting the right, you know, um, spacers behind there to make it macro and to get everything to fit in this dimension and still focus sharply on the ground glass. So that's what I did. Oh, and another thing, I designed a Super 16 gate for it while I was at it. And uh, I had those 3D printed in steel and I ground and polished them to a mirror finish uh, or it to a mirror finish and installed it and uh, tested it with some film leader. And now everything seems to be working perfectly. Uh, I, got, I finally got the focus correct. I used the prismatic focusing device that Bolex uh, sold that mounts to the gate behind the gate so you can see through the uh, taking lens it's for titling and things like that or checking your lens out for macro shots for the uh, camera but um, I used it to check that the you know EF mount was in uh, perfect focus for infinity and then I adjusted the ground glass up and down until I got it exactly to the same plane and focus at infinity and then I got this macro lens here goes the lights I got this macro lens mounted camera HDMI uh, HD camera to focus on the same um, image so so now everything focuses and uh, now it's time for testing what do you think of that I um I've been thinking about this project for a couple of years, maybe three or four years, and uh, it just all came together when I finally found 
the pellicle mirror that I needed. I had been looking all over the place, um, the scientific optics vendors, things like that, but none of them was exactly the right dimensions. And I finally found the the one, and it was relatively inexpensive compared to what the scientific ones are costing. So I uh, I got that and uh, started designing the mirror box around the dimensions, which is the mirror box is what holds the pellicle mirror inside the adapter here. So this all bolts directly to the existing bolt hole. So all I have to do is take that off and put the turret back on it and put the old gate back on it and it would be just like it was. I made no no modifications. The only thing I have to do is uh, modify the sprockets and I, I have my own machine shop so I'm able to do that if I need to. Uh, I'm going to run a test and I, I, I will do it. Um, it just wasn't a priority. Uh, right now I'm just wanting to test to make sure everything works perfectly. It moves film through the gate and all that and everything looks great. Um, so I just need to run some film which is um, what I'm going to do today. I loaded up some double X and a Kodak and uh, I'm going to run a short test probably you know 25 50 feet and then process that in my Lomo tank and scan it and see how it looks. So it's a Super 16 video assisted. Actually, it's not assisted. It's a they're all there is this video. There's no eye, um, you know, optical type of a viewfinder on it. So uh, everything, all the focus, all the framing, everything has to be done through these this HDMI camera to a um, external monitor. And uh, so that's where this I is some parts I have made and I have designed. Here is a 3D printed steel, 3, 316L steel, Super 16 gate that I designed in Fusion. Here's one that's finished after I polished it, ground it, checked it with a micrometer. All the holes line up. Everything is perfectly in alignment. Uh, I can hold it up next to a regular 16 ball X gate. Here's a regular 16 millimeter. Well, like gate from my uh, Model S, and this is mine. And let's put them side by side here. Let's see, that's upside down. Okay, so you can see the difference. So this is this is my uh, Super 16. You see, this rail is extremely thin compared to this rail on this one, and then the the uh, opening here is um you know it's a it's uh fully to specs i designed it based on super 16 specs i found on uh, you know searching on uh google search and uh anyway this is all i reverse designed i'm not an engineer so i hate to use the word engineer but the common term will be reverse engineer and uh may, many people don't know this but the bolex has a piece of you know a hard plastic in the pull down claw window here and so I also made one for mine and uh, painted the whole thing and uh, this is an extra one that I made uh, I made several of them here is some super 16 um, sprocket uh, spindles that I made uh, I designed these in CAD also here's the original Bolex one you can see it has a satin nickel finish well, mine come out pretty rough looking when they're 3D printed. So I put it on the lathe and polished the surface to get it, you know, looking good. And, uh, you know, you can see yourself in it. So here's the holes for the, um, the screws, set screws. And there's the sprocket and the, uh, you can see it's pretty close to the original. It has the same cutouts. So you can put the sprocket on. Oops. <laughs> okay. So you can put the sprocket on uh, with the camera assembled. It, it's, these, these are necessary or you couldn't get the sprocket in there. Anyway, everything's matching. I, I, mic I used a micrometer and checked everything and it's very close. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out. I've got this Super 16 gate in my H16S slash M4 and uh, I'm going to run a test on it. But, uh, Everything has to be done through these, this HDMI camera to an um, external monitor. And uh, 
So that's where I am with this and uh, I'll be posting this up on uh, Facebook and if you like this video please uh, subscribe if you want to see more about this project and some of my other projects check out my other videos and, and please uh, like and subscribe if you did like it. Thank you and uh, goodbye.